Hi there, welcome back to Pretty Much Flawless. Today in this video, we are going to be taking a look at this reversing solenoid. Let's get into it. Alright, so here's the reversing solenoid. So, you have your negative battery terminal right here, your positive battery terminal right here, your one motor terminal, and your other motor terminal. Now remember, this is for DC brushed motors only. It won't work with DC brushless or AC motors. So, DC brushed only. And then these two terminals right here, if a positive signal is applied to this one, then the motor will go one way. If a positive signal is applied to this one, the motor will go the other way. So a wiring diagram will be shown on the screen how to wire this up. Alright, so I have this all wired up here, like our diagram, and what we'll do is right now with our rocker switch in the middle position here we have zero volts we flip it the one way and we get 12 volts we flip it the other way and we get 12 volts this is actually minus 12 volts so the polarity has reversed very good so very good so now let's measure the current that these coils take in here just so you get a general idea it would be different between different solenoids and different manufacturers but if you're using a solenoid about this size and a similar type then this will give you a good idea how much current it takes so probe that was in the voltage and ohm position over here over to our 20 amps maximum and we'll switch this over to DC amps so I did a previous video covering how to use multimeters I'll have a link to that in the description down below but you always want to measure current in series because basically how a multimeter reads it is there's a very low ohmage resistor inside the multimeter here and the multimeter measures the voltage drop across that resistor and then using Ohm's law can calculate the current so it's basically a uh, a very very low ohm resistor if you were to measure something like voltage then that would be a short you really want to be careful and not do that so always measure current in series so here we go so we're gonna flip it one way and it draws about 1.8 amps good and then back to the middle position zero I'll flip it the other way and it's about 2 amps so we might be wondering why the uh, why one way draws more current than the other way well there's two coils in here pulling the, uh, the solenoid either the one way or the other way so one coil might be have to do slightly more work in order to pull it over. Maybe one coil has a little bit less resistance than the other coil, so it can draw more current. I'm not sure, really sure, but it's probably one of the two reasons there. So now what we can also do is if we can measure dropout voltage, if we can measure the minimum voltage it takes to start this solenoid. This might be less interesting if you're just learning how to wire this up, but this is something I thought it would be maybe be interesting. So first thing we want to do is take our multimeter out of the current position and put it back, the probe back into the voltage and ohms position. There we go. Now we can twist our dial over to volts here. And now what we can do is we can measure the voltage here. So right now our voltage is about 12.3 volts. And what we'll do is we'll turn our voltage down and to about 10 volts. Let's try that about 10 volts roughly so we'll flip the switch and see what happens and we'll see we have yep voltage at these terminals here we flip it one way and we flip it the other way and we have that voltage only minus good and we'll flip the switch that didn't sound a lot strong and yeah we have no voltage on our terminals here so it's probably best to stay above 10 volts so actually it worked the one way that's interesting worked the one way but not the other way so then you lose reverse when this is a, also the coil that drew more current so this is probably the coil that has a lower resistance that's why it's still working at the, these lower voltages but the other coil is not so that is very interesting. You might still hear a bit of a click, but it's not flipping the solenoid enough to uh, 
give any give us any voltage on these terminals here. So that is interesting. So say above 10 volts if you're using a 12 volt solenoid, I'd say like it might work below 10 volts, but solenoids also differ. If, like different manufacturers might have like be, there be definitely be different um, volt minimum working voltages. So I'd say st stay above 10 volts and you should be good. So another thing we can try is the holdout voltage. So basically, it takes a certain amount of voltage and current to to start the solenoid, but then it can use a much lower voltage and current to just keep the solenoid in that position. So we can try that. So what we'll have right now is let's see, we'll turn our solenoid back up to 12 volts, and we'll flip our switch here. And yeah, we have about 12.2 volts. So we'll turn it down and see when it cuts out, where there's not enough voltage to hold the solenoid. So here we go. Working good at 9 volts, working good at 7 volts, 6 volts, 5 volts, 4 volts. And yeah, cut out about, I'd say 4.3. We're going to turn this up again. Okay, 5 volts, we'll turn a bit more slowly here. Alright, so about 5 volts, still working good. 4.8 volts, still still working good. 4.6 volts, still pretty good. 4.44 volts, good. 4.29 volts, good. 3.7, oh, yeah, but... So right, right around 4 volts, it cuts out. Alright, so... Just remember that different solenoids will have different specifications. Refer to your spec sheet, and this is just kind of a general example. Thanks for watching Spew today. Hope you learned something. If you did, please subscribe. That would really help my channel, and I'll see you next time.